Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some OCR FSMQ lessons and today we are talking about trigonometric identity. So as you can see the learning objective today is to derive famous trigonometric, uh, trigonometric equations and manipulate them to suit our needs. Uh, now this is a, a pretty long one so um, you know you might want to watch it in two stages or uh, I'll may actually link the PowerPoint in the description so, so you can play it to yourself with the power of YouTube you can just uh, take it back a step uh, if you miss something but um, yeah I, I was really proud of the first half of this PowerPoint because I, I made it all myself and uh, it was actually lovely doing some of the proofs so that's how sad I am when I'm actually enjoying you know uh, creating these things but here we go let's talk about it so you learn to love the trig identities as they'll help us solve lots of problems with trigonometric uh, equations that we'll talk about just a little bit later um, in the episode. Uh, so let's remind ourselves of our lovely Sokotoa equations that we spoke about last week as it was uh, in my lessons but four days ago for you guys. Uh, so sin equals op over hype, cos equals adj over hype and tan equals op over uh, adj. But let's think about it in a different way. S equals o over h c equals a over h and t equals o over a, a. Uh, literally just hit the first letters of the uh, of the equations you know not done something too much drastic there but let's for a laugh divide s by c so you end up with s over c equals o over h divided by a over h but how do you divide by fractions well you roll them over and, uh, and times them well the second one at least so you end up with o over h times h over a. Now then, those h's will now cancel because, um, for example, if you were doing 1 over 2 times uh, 2 over 3, you uh, that would be uh, 2 over 6, which is actually a third. And obviously I could have got that third by cancelling those twos there. So that's how that works. But that's just uh, easy algebra, uh, uh, easy uh, fractions. Um, but anyway, going off on a, on a tangent, so that uh, the h's will cancel, and you're just left with o over a. But what is an o, a, o over a? It's a t. So o over a equals tan. So that must mean that our first identity is that when you divide any sin theta by the cos of that sin theta, you will get the same as tan theta. So I think that's a lovely little proof there. And that's one that you'll need to know for the OCR FSMQ. You're not unfortunately given that, but it's a nice one to prove, uh, you know, if you're struggling uh, just by going back to what uh, Soccer Toa is. And that's, uh, that's something that will come up in Core 2, Core 3, uh, Core 4 as well, actually. So sin of uh, cos is a tan. Uh, so here we go, Sokatoa, uh, there's a, <coughs> a right angle triangle, but uh, that's for a laugh this time, square S and C and add them together. Well, obviously there's a reason towards it. Sin squared add cos squared equals O squared over H squared added to A squared over H squared. Like that, because obviously S equals that and C equals that. But that equals O squared over A squared. Uh, o squared plus a squared over h squared because you know when you add in like denominators it's just the addition of the tops but think about Pythagoras a squared plus b squared equals c squared so think about the generic trig triangle which is opposite hypotenuse and adjacent so if we did Pythagoras on this we'd get o squared plus a squared equals h squared because obviously that would be x that will be your y, that will be your z, or your a, b, and c if you if you want to think about it that way. But that equals h squared. So that means that our o plus o squared plus a squared must equal h squared, and that's divided by h squared, and anything divided by itself is 1. So that brings us to our second identity, which is any sin squared theta plus cos squared of the same theta equals 1. And I thought, Yet again, I think that's a lovely proof. That's one that you need to know 
uh, for your OCR FSMQ. Now there's just a little bit more to do with that one. So we've now met with first uh, two trig identities, uh, but you'll meet some more in Core 3 in Year 13. Usually you might do it in Year 12, but usually Year 13. And they involve uh, inverse trig functions such as cot, sec, and uh, cosec. But no, I won't talk about those too much. Uh, so there we go. Sin, sin theta over cos theta equals tan theta. But sin squared uh, plus cos squared theta equals 1. Uh, so we can manipulate the second uh, identity to suit the needs. So from there, you can split it in, uh, into two. You can call any sin squared theta in the world. Uh, 1 minus cos squared of the same theta because I've just took that over the other side and similarly you can do the same with that and call that cos squared theta equals 1 minus sin squared theta because I've just took the sin squared over the other side so that'll come in handy later on remember these identities or how to get to them because you were not given them as I mentioned before so here we go trigonometric equations uh, this is what we're uh, going to be doing now so to use our newly found trigonometric identities to help solve trigonometric equations so how can we find x in this equation cos x equals 0 0.7 what we're, re what we're really asking here is which angle has a cosine of 0 0.7 the answer is very easy just check on the calculator you do the shift sin uh, shift cos of 0 0.7 and you'd end up with about 45.6 degrees but that's not the only answer Big shock, big shock. So these are very famous uh, trigonometric graphs. We have to find those other answers that are hiding away. So we use the very th uh, famous trigonometric graphs. So this is the sine graph, um, the very symmetric in nature, and the very famous shapes. This is the cos graph. And if you're good with your transformations, it's just a um, sine graph to move, move back. Uh, 90 degrees because there you go if if we see there uh, that comes down like that that is a cost graph if you didn't get why I just did there doesn't really matter but uh, it's something you'll come across in the future but here we go let's look back at that question before cos x equals no <coughs> 0 0.7 it's not an equation really it's the meeting of two graphs so if we go back to it intersection uh, graphs meet when their algebra is equal to each other so it's really the meeting of y equals cos x and y equals 0 0.7 like that so uh, the answers are where the two graphs meet so that's uh, there's the one that the calculator talked about which was about 45.6 but with using the symmetry of the graph we can do 360 minus that answer because the distance between uh, there to there the same as the distance from there to there so from 0 to the answer is the same as the distance from 360 to the other answer so there we go the two solutions are 45.6 and 314.4 now that's in um, the region of 0 to 360 uh, but you'll be told you know, where to go uh, with your uh, question in the exam it will tell you whether it wants it in the range of 0 to 360 or 0 to 720 or whatever but this goes on to infinity that way and to minus infinity that way there you go there are infinitely many solutions because of the symmetric nature of the graphs but here we go here's another one solve for x in 0 to 360 sin x equals 0.35 so step one draw your graph in the line where they meet uh, and identify the intersections but on this one it's slightly different to the um, cost graph because you won't be taking off 360 this time you'll be taking off 180 because distance between 180 and that answer is the same between 0 and that answer so get your calculator involved x equals 20.5 and use the symmetry to get the other so it'll be 180 minus that answer which is 159.5 similarly for tan solve for x in 0 to 360, tan x equals 1. Draw the, uh, the graph on the line. There you go. This is the most confusing one, the tan graph, because uh, it, it's very weird. Identify the intersections and get your calculator involved. So 45 degrees, and as you can see, 
uh, solutions on a Turing graph come every 180 degrees, so you can simply just add 180 on the answer uh, to using the symmetry. So there you go, 180, add the 45, equals 225 degrees. But here's a more complex uh, trigonometric equation. Uh, you can only work if the trig is on one side and the numbers on the other. So we'd have to get 3 equals 5 sin x, and that's still not good because you would need one singular sin x. So you divide both sides by 5 to get sin x equals 3 fifths, and you do the same again. Uh, you work out the intersection, and then you use the symmetry. Uh, after you've worked one answer out on your calculator. But these are even tougher. Uh, solve for x uh, in 0 to 360. Now you would be panicking there when you see tan squared x minus 2 tan x minus 15 equals 0. Uh, but it's a very common type uh, of question, this one. Uh, but don't panic, just rewrite it using the first letter of the trick. So t squared minus 2t minus 15 equals 0. And everybody knows how to solve that quadratic. Uh, you can just factorize it so t minus 5 and t plus 3 equals 0 so we can say now uh, that t, t equals 5 or minus 3 uh, bring back the trig so tan x equals 5 because remember uh, a t equals a tan x so tan x equals 5 or tan x equals minus 3 and then you do uh, the graph again but draw your two lines this time so you've got four solutions uh, for that one You'd get that and that and that and that, so it would be 78.7 and 258.7 because remember you add 180 degrees on your answer for tan graphs and similarly you'd get that. Now here we go, this is the more complex, this is where we use with trigonometric identities because we've got a sin and a cos in the same, uh, same uh, equation. But you can't have two bits of uh, tri different trigonometry uh, in the same equation. So we'll have to think of this one, sin squared equals uh, 1 minus cos squared theta. So we can replace this sin squared x with 1 minus cos squared x. So there we go. And we, we can uh, go back to what we said before and change it to the first uh, letter of the trig. And call that two brackets, 1 minus c squared uh, equals 5c minus 1. Expand that bracket here. Tidy it up like that. 2c squared plus 5c minus 3 equals 0. Solve the quadratic. I think it uh, equals there. Uh, I think it factorizes to that. It does. So 2c, uh, uh, sorry, c equals a half or c equals minus 3. There you go. There's the y equals 0 0.2 line like that. There you go, there you go, and that's that. There are your four solutions. Remember you take off uh, 360 for this one. And here's another one. Just replace that with a 1 minus sine squared. I'll just put that on uh, for you to have a look at. There you go. Just be wary on this one, you have three solutions because obviously a uh, sine graph uh, cuts the x-axis at three points at 0, 180 and 360. And that is that. Uh, so I hope you've found this helpful. It is a tricky um, concept to understand. Uh, but, you know, with a bit of practice you should be fine. And, and this pops up in A-level. Uh, Core 2, Core 3, and Core 4, I believe. So, yeah, I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a like down below if you did. It's been a long one, so probably watch it again. Try and take some more in. But there will be a worksheet down below uh, for you to have a go at. And, yeah, leave your feedback down below. And I shall see you guys in a couple of days' time for uh, binomial expansions, I believe. So, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.